so it is the process that Jesus is forming us it's the process that Jesus who is our foundation we are reflecting the image of the foundation upon the superstructure if the superstructure is not reflecting the image of the foundation it cannot endure on the foundation you cannot build anything differently on Christ you must build in conformity to the image of Christ I welcome everyone to Christ-like International Assembly we are raising a Christ-like generation a generation of believers that will think like Christ act like Christ and live like Christ and I believe you are part of this move of God hallelujah yeah. we are still on our new position in Christ and last week we looked at being rooted in Christ being rooted in Christ this morning we are going to look at being built up in Christ being built up in Christ hallelujah Amen. tell someone you got to be built up in Christ you got to be built up in Christ in our team scripture Colossians chapter number 2 verse number 6 to 7 in the New King James he said therefore as you have received Christ Jesus the Lord so walk in him he said as you have received Christ Jesus as your Lord now Jesus has become your master now you are living on his life because the first Adam died and he became dead to God spiritually now we are living the life of Jesus we are no more the seed of Adam we are now the seed of Christ and Apostle Paul said our old man has been crucified with Christ nevertheless I live but Christ liveth in me then he said the life that I now live I live by the faith of the Son of God who loves me and he gave himself for me. So we now live the life of the son of God who loves us and he gave up his life. He died in our place. And when you become born again, it means you are born of God. You are born of the spirit. It means you are spiritually alive to God. Adam was dead to God spiritually. But when you have become born again, you become alive to God. He said, now that you have received Jesus Christ, you did not just receive him, you have received his life. You have received his nature of righteousness. You have received everything that constitutes Christ. You have become a seed of Christ. You are now born of God. You are now born of the word. You are now born of the spirit. Tell someone you are not ordinary. You have a different kind of birth. You are born of God. You are born from above. You are the saint of God. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Shout amen, somebody. You are born of God. He said, now that we have received Jesus Christ as the Lord, we should walk in him. How do we walk in him? How do we live in him? The verse 7, rooted and built up in him. Now the word walk in him, rooted and built up, they are participles modifying how we ought to live, how we ought to conduct ourselves in our new world called Christ. We are in Christ's world. We are in a new place. We are in a new realm. We have been delivered from the dominion of Satan and we have been translated into the kingdom of this dear son of God. So we are born of God. Hallelujah. He said, rooted and built up in him. Established in the faith that you have been taught. Abounding in it with thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Amen. And we look at rooted in him. But we are going to look at being built up in Christ. Tell someone, be built up in Christ. Built up in Christ. It's very necessary. Yes. Now, if you check the expression built up in the original language, it refers to the process of building a house upon a foundation that has already been laid. The word 
up that don't mean that you that don't mean that you are building from foundation. It means that you are building a superstructure. Superstructure is a building above the foundation. You are building on what is already existed. You are building on what has already been laid. So it refers to building up a house upon a foundation that has already been laid. Hallelujah. Amen. And Jesus is our sure foundation. Jesus is our foundation, the sure foundation that we can build the structure of our lives. The superstructure of our lives can only be built on the sure foundation. Hallelujah. He told Peter, he said, by that revelation, he said, upon this rock will I build my church. He said, that at Petros, upon this Petra will I build my ecclesia. He said, upon this rock, he said, you are a stone. You are a little stone. But see, in the, in the Palestine, in the ancient days, they built with stones. But foundations are laid on a rock. He said, you are the little stone that we use to build the superstructure. But I am the foundation, the rock, the Petra. When you become born again, you have become a living stone. We are the Petros. But Christ is the Petra. He is the rock. We are the small, small stones that God is building a sanctuary from himself. But Christ is the foundation. In 1 Corinthians chapter number 3 verse 11, he said, For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ, our Lord. He said, No man can lay any other foundation than the one that is already laid, which is Jesus Christ. So when you become born again, Christ is your foundation upon which you will build the superstructure of your destiny. If you make Christ the foundation of your marriage, you can build a great marriage on the superstructure of Christ. If you can make Christ the foundation of your family, then you are going to have a glorious family. Hallelujah. It refers to building up a house upon a foundation that is already laid. Number two, the expressing build up emphasizes a close conformity between what is built and the specified foundation. You know, every superstructure takes the shape of its foundation. When you see a beautiful building, the shape of the building is the shape of the foundation. Sometimes you don't see the beauty of the foundation until you see the beauty reflected in the superstructure. You cannot build bigger than your superstructure. You cannot build wider than the size of your foundation. Your foundation becomes the jurisdiction. It becomes the, 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 the environment. It becomes the borderline upon which you can, the extent of your building is determined by your foundation. So no building is bigger than its foundation. Hallelujah. So the expression, it, 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 it emphasizes a close conformity. A close conformity. A close conformity between what is built and its specified foundation. It means that what is built reflects the shape, the beauty, the image of its foundation. That means that when you become born again, you cannot live a life different from the life that is in Christ. Christianity or the spiritual growth in Christ it's your process that you become conformed to the image of Christ. The reason why you became born again, you didn't die to go to heaven because we are born again so that we can be conformed to the image of Christ. We are born again so that we can grow to become like Christ. So that when God sees you, he sees Christ in you. The ultimate part of Christianity is that at the end of the day, Christ can be seen in us. That is why we are raising a Christ-like generation. A generation that will think like Christ. 
A generation that will act like Christ. A generation that will live like Christ. So it's a close conformity between what is built and its specified foundation. So how does Jesus look like? What is the nature of Jesus? What is the behavior of Jesus? What is the mind of Jesus? What is the life of Jesus? How would Jesus would have lived the way you are living? It means that what is built is confer, conformed to its specified foundation. I pray that from today, as you begin to grow in your faith, may you grow to look like Christ. May you grow to become like Christ. As people see you, let them see Jesus in your eyes. They will see his character in you. The Bible said, when they saw Peter, the boldness of Peter and John, the Bible said they saw that they were ignorant men. Ignorant means they were scholastically disadvantaged. They were unlearned. They were unschooled. They were not part of the philosopher elites. But they took the knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. They talk like Jesus. They think like Jesus. They act like Jesus. They live like Jesus. Why? What is built on the foundation? It is in conformity of the foundation. What is built on the foundation look exactly like the foundation. Because the superstructure takes the shape. It takes the nature. It takes the jurisdiction of the foundation. So Jesus wants us to live a life that conform to who he is. That conform to his personality. Hallelujah. Amen. Do you understand what I'm saying today? When you read in Galatians chapter 4, verse number 19, Apostle Paul said, My little children, of whom I travel again, I travel in bed again, until Christ be formed in you. Paul said, my little children, I keep labor in bed again. Because it was through me that you became born again. So I am your spiritual father. But it's as if I am giving birth to you again in Christ. Because now you are in the process of your spiritual growth. But I'm laboring in the word. I'm laboring in prayer. I'm laboring in teaching you. So that Jesus can be formed in you. Oh God. The stature of Christ can be formed in you. That when you say you are born again, your life is in line with the life of Christ. You speak like Christ. You act like Christ. You live like Christ. You become the physical manifestation of Jesus. The Bible said God wants all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. That is spiritual growth. He wants us to grow in Christ. It's not enough to be born again. But it is enough to grow in Christ. To grow in the full stature of Christ. To grow in his mind. To grow in your nature. To grow in the new life in Christ. That Jesus should be seen in everywhere in your life. Jesus should be seen in your conduct. Jesus should be seen in your behavior. Jesus should be seen in your business. That if you are a businessman, you will be a Christ-like businessman. You will be a Christ-like uh, entrepreneur. You will be a Christ-like hairdresser. You will be a Christ-like accountant. You will be a Christ-like lawyer. You will be a Christ-like worker at the fa uh, land commission. You will be a Christ-like banker. Christ-like nurse. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus wants to be seen in us. So that we can both say, I labor again that Christ will be forming us. So it is the process that Jesus is forming us. It's the process that Jesus, who is our foundation, we are reflecting the image of the foundation upon the superstructure. If the superstructure is not reflecting the image of the foundation, it cannot endure on the foundation. You cannot build anything differently on Christ. You must build in conformity to the image of Christ. So what does it mean to be built up in Christ? Number one, to be built up in Christ means to walk in a continuous unbroken communion 
and fellowship with Jesus. Hallelujah. It means to walk in a continuous unbroken communion and fellowship with Jesus. In John chapter 14 verse number 23, Jesus made a remarkable statement. Jesus said, and Jesus answered and said unto him, if any man love me, he will keep my words. And my father will love him and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. We will come and set our home with him. We will come and set our residence, our domicile. We will come and set our headquarters in him. If any man love me, he will keep my words. And my father will love him. And we will come unto him and make our abode with him. We will come and stay with him. We will come and live with him. We will come and be with him in every situation. So, to be built up in Christ means to walk in a continuous, it is not a, a continuous, unbroken communion and fellowship with Jesus. It is when our lives and our mind are focused on Jesus without any interruption where we draw nourishment and strength from Jesus. Our minds and our lives are to focus on Jesus without any interruption where we can draw nourishment and strength. Hallelujah. Amen. The more you look like Jesus, the more you lose interest in the things you think they are important in this life. The reason why we are running after many things that are unnecessary because why is it that someone will acquire everything when he die? They will never give you your best suit when you die. Even if they give to you, thieves will go and steal it. Why is it that have you seen a man that he buried with his Range Rover? For what? Let them bury you with gold. Thief will break your your, your, your casket and take the gold. But there's something that when you gain in this life, it will benefit your eternity. It's your conformity to the image of Christ. May we be like Jesus. Amen. I like this old Tama song. He said, Let the world see Jesus in your eye. Show them love they can't deny. Let the world see heaven in your eye. Jesus in your eye. Ask someone, can they see Jesus in your eyes? Let the world see Jesus in your eye. Show them love. They Be like Jesus. Yeah. May we look like Jesus. Yeah. May we think like Jesus. Yeah. May we conduct ourselves like Jesus. Yeah. May we live like Jesus. May we be a Christ like believers of Christ yeah. in the name of Jesus. Yeah. It's to focus on Him. You draw from Him. Matthew chapter 7, verse number 24 to 27. Hallelujah. Amen. Matthew chapter 7 verse 24 to 27. Listen carefully. This is the center of the message. Hallelujah. Jesus said, Therefore, whosoever that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them shall be likened unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. Hello. Jesus is about to give us the materials. We need to build the structure of our Christian life upon him being the sure foundation. 
He said, Therefore, whosoever that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I shall liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. Verse 25. And the rain descended and the flood came and the wind blew. Talking about three levels of challenges that every Christian will face as long as you take a walk with Jesus. Let me tell you, taking a stand to make Jesus the Lord of your life, many things will come against you. That's why Paul said to Timothy, he said, endure hardship as a good soldier of Christ. Endure hardness. Endure difficulties as a good soldier of Christ. Endure pain as a good soldier of Christ. That's what Paul also said to Timothy. He that will lead a godly life in Christ shall suffer persecution. That's what Apostle Paul said. Based on the foundation upon which I have built my life, what can separate me from the love of God? Is it persecution? Is it hunger? Is it poverty? Is it money? Is it death? Is it this life? He said, in all these things, we are more than conqueror. Are you know what I'm saying? Yeah. No wonder he said, all things work together for good to them that love God and to them which are called according to his purpose. Many things will come against the Christian, but it is not what come against you. It is the foundation upon which you have built your Christian life. Your foundation determines the quality of your strength. That will stand when you are going through the challenges of your life. Every Christian will face challenge. Every Christian will face challenge. Every Christian will go through the time of storm. Every Christian will go through the time of the rain. Every Christian will go through the time of the flood. But it is not what comes against you. Thousand will fall at your side. Ten thousand will fall at your right hand. So Jesus is showing us the materials we need to build up, to be built up on him. He's showing us how do we build our faith on him? How do we get built up upon him? He said, the verse 25, the rain descended. The flood came, the wind blew, and beat upon that house. It fell not because it was founded upon the rock. Hello? He said, it fell not because what? It was founded upon verse 26. And everyone that heareth these sayings of man, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man, that built his house upon the sand. Verse 27. And the rain descended. And the flood came. And the wind blew. And beat up against that house. And it fell. Then he said. And great was the fall of it. Hello. I will delve into that next week. Next week we are going to look at the two builders. And you will define whether you are a flesh builder or you are a wise builder in your work with God, in your build up in Christ, whether you are building foolishly or you are building wisely. Hello? Praise the Lord. But Jesus showed us the requirement of building as a wise man and the requirement of building as a foolish man. Now, for Jesus said that he that heareth these sayings of man means Jesus assumed himself as the master builder. Hello? Jesus assumed himself as the modern chief architect. And these builders are workers or servants who are working under the master builder. And how they are going to be effective in their building is based on the instructions they receive from the master builder. Hello, do you get what I'm saying? So we see Jesus as a master builder working with builders under him. That they work by obeying his instruction. Now, he showed us what we are going to build is going to go through phases of challenges. 
the rain will come the flood will come the wind will blow but it is not what come against the building it is the quality of its foundation so the builders have a choice either they choose to build on the rock or they choose to build in the sand but Jesus said he that hears my sins and does them is the one who is aligning himself to build on the rock he shows us how do a wise builder builds on the rock he said the wise builder hears the sins of Jesus and he does the sins of Jesus the foolish builder hears the sins of Jesus and he does not the sins of Jesus hello praise the Lord hallelujah are you flowing carefully yes. so all of them are hearing something it means that the instructions were given to all of them together but some chose to do some chose not to do hallelujah but I will focus on the sayings of Christ then we will look at the two builders next week are you enjoying the message this morning? Yes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Now Jesus said, he that heareth the sins of man, not the sins of your father. When I talk to you through the word of God, it is higher than anyone who has ever instructed you. The sayings of God may sometimes make you uncomfortable because it comes to oppose what you have believed. The sayings of God comes to inconvenience you because it takes you from your convenient zone. The sayings of God will come like a stretch on you because it comes to shake your old foundation. He that heareth the sayings of mine. So what is the sayings of Christ? The sayings of Christ, number one, are the instructions of Christ. Every great destiny is built on instruction. You cannot build a great life. You cannot build a great future without your obedience to instruction. Instructions are principles. Instructions are guidelines. Instructions are commands. Instructions are rules that are required for a particular adventure. That if you don't comply and apply by the command that befits that adventure, you are not ready for it to resource. Higher. When you come to church, you come to receive instructions from God. And our ability to see change in our life is our obedience to instructions. Like I will give out, please, we are, this is a man, we are, we are praying, we are fasting on Wednesday. All of us should come and pray. I gave you instructions by the Spirit. Some will decide to come. Some will choose not to come. It was an instruction by God. Whatever that is not from the Spirit, I cannot tell you to do it. I don't need to shake myself like something has come upon me that now the spirit has come. No, it doesn't come and go. He lives in me forever. He doesn't come with shaking. He's a gentle spirit. Hallelujah. Praise God. So the sayings of Christ are the instructions of Christ. Instructions are principles. Instructions are guidelines. They are rules that guide a particular adventure. For you to become rich, there are instructions you must follow. For you to become a great businesswoman, there are instructions you need to keep to be a good. For you to be a good wife, a good husband, there are instructions you must keep. The reason for wasted life because we don't want to obey any instructions. We want to go our, our own way. You cannot have God's resource if you want to go in your own way. The day Jesus became your Lord, he became your master. And servants take instructions from their master. You are not of your own. You are submitting to Jesus. He is your Lord. 
We are not living unto ourselves, but unto the one who died and rose again. You can't go your own way. You can't live by your own mind. You can't do your own things, for God cannot endorse what you want. He endorses what he wants. God doesn't follow us. We follow him. Hallelujah. Amen. And he gives us, he says, he that flow my instructions, number two, instructions of Jesus, they are the words inspired, they are the words of God through the spirit and through scriptures. The saints of Christ are the word of God, they are the word through the spirit and the scriptures. Sometimes you are praying, God will put instruction on your heart. Sometimes as you are meditating on God's word, a rima word will fall. See, when you study the Bible, God speaks to you through the scriptures. Because the Bible is the written word of God. As you begin to study and meditate, God says something to you. Rima is a piece of God's word that has been illuminated or inspired by the Holy Ghost. Relevant for you now. And every rima word you receive is time sensitive. It came to fulfill a particular thing in God. And sometimes you, are, you came to church as, as the preaching was going. God slays something on your heart. God placed something in your mind. You, you just forget the instruction. You just want to live your own way. Because you think it is making you inconvenient. You are not comfortable with it. Every instruction will make you uncomfortable. Hallelujah. Amen. They, are, they are the word through the spirit and through scriptures. And I will show you the essence of the word of God or the essence of the instructions of God. The essence of the sayings of Christ. You know, the, the sayings of Christ are the materials. They are the materials that we need to build the structure of our lives. Hallelujah. And our lives depend on how we respond to the sayings of Christ. Your life depends on how you respond to the instructions that God gives you. As you pray, God ministers something unto you. As you meditate on God's word, as you hear God's word, as we preach the message to you, God will put some, something in your heart that you know that God wants me to do this. He said, Jesus said, if you abandon these instructions, you are building your life in the sand. When the rain descends, when the flood comes, when the wind blows, he said, you will fall and grace shall be your fall. But if you are going to stand strong in the midst of the challenges of life, then the sins of God, the instructions of Christ are the building materials you need. You see, the, you see, you see the, your, your materials you built with determines the fate of your life. And these are the materials that will determine the structure and the fate of our life. Our life depends on how we respond to the sayings of God. Obedient to God's word creates a firm foundation for living the Christian life. You can never have a strong foundation in this Christian life until you constantly obey God's word. Obedient to God's word creates a firm foundation for you to live the Christian life. Because most, most of the time, we give up on the faith in any challenge, then we come back for forgiveness. We can't start, we can't stand the trials of our faith. So we are not making spiritual progress in our work with God. We are always behind our faith. Because when our faith is tried, we fail the test. We go back again, we fail it many times. Because it takes obedience of the word to create a firm foundation for you to live a successful Christian life. You cannot have a successful Christian life without obedience to the, God, to the instructions of God. Without obedience to the saints of God. Hallelujah. Amen. It's, it's the only way. It's the game changer. It's the only way your life can be transformed. It's the only way you can be conformed to the image of Christ. Why the, why the, why the essence of God's word? 
What is the essence of God's instruction? Number one. Essence of God's instruction. Essence of God's word. Hallelujah. Amen. Some of us, we come to church, we don't see any change in our lives. Because the instruction that we're given, you didn't do it. You come back again. You don't do it. So you are the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. You are like ancient of days. You don't change. But I pray from today. May you have a willing heart to obey the instructions. May you receive the instructions of God. May you practice the instructions of God. May you have the obedience to God's word. Even as instructions come to you this morning. Have the heart to do all the instructions. Instructions that come as you study scriptures. Instructions that come as you listen to the message. May God give you the obedient heart to obey the instructions of God. Shout amen somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The essence of God's instruction. Number one. God establishes his purpose through his word. Through his instruction. When God wants to establish his purpose. His will. He establishes it through his word. Through his instruction. Through his sayings. Do you want God's purpose to be established in your life? Then it can only come through his instruction. God establishes his purpose through instruction. Now in Genesis chapter 1, God wanted to establish the purpose of light. God has a plan to produce light. But how did God establish that plan? It was through his word. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of the Lord moved upon the face of the waters. Verse 3. And God said, light be. Let there be light. And there was light. God has a purpose to establish his light. How did he establish the light? Through his word. God has a purpose to bring light in the future. How did he establish the light? How did he establish his purpose? Through his instruction. He gave instruction. Let there be light. And nature responded to the instruction. Hallelujah. Amen. Do you want God to establish his purpose in your life? It can only be established through his instruction. So the more we do, we hear the sayings of God. And we do the sayings of God. We are actually allowing God to establish his purpose in our lives. The reason for many confusion. The reason that many are not satisfied. The reason why many are giving up and they are not happy because our life is not in line with God's will. When your life is in line with God's will, he said he leaded his sheep beside a peaceful water. Not a troubled water. Because the sheep cannot drink from a troubled water. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leaded me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. You walk in the right path. Yet though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will not fear evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. See, see, Thou restore my soul. When your life is aligned to God's will, no matter the pain that goes around you, no matter the suffering around you, there is an inner joy and peace that sustains you in the midst of your storm. It sustains you in the midst of your flood. Hallelujah. Amen. Everyone will go through the challenges of life. The challenges of life. No man can escape the challenges of life. But it's not about the challenges. It's about your foundation. Hallelujah. Amen. It's about your foundation. The essence of God's word, of God's instruction, that God establishes his purpose through his word. Number two. Jesus is the working word of God. So when you walk by the word, you are actually producing Jesus in you. Hello? Because Jesus is the working word of God. Jesus was the word of God that stepped into the earth. So when you hear God's instruction, you obey, you are actually walking in Jesus. Do you want to walk in Jesus? Do you want to walk in Jesus? Yes. Then walk in his instruction. Jesus said in John chapter 10 verse 7, If ye abide in me, 
and my word abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Because when you abide in him, how do you abide in Christ? You abide in Christ when the word of Christ is abide in you. So when his word is abide in you, you are actually abide in him. Then he said, because his word abide in you, whatever you will become the will of God. Because when the word of God abides in you, your will sinks to his will. You didn't catch that. When the word of God abides in you, whatever you will is what God's will. Because now your will has sinked to his will. He said, and ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be Ginomaya unto you. The word Ginomaya means that even if what you are asking does not exist, because the word of God abides in you and it is out of God's will, even if what you are asking do not exist, it shall be created for you. <laughs> do you want to live the powerful Christian life? Is constantly walking in the instruction. Walking in the instruction, you are walking in Christ because Christ is the walking word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. This is Christianity with power. Imagine that woman business is run by the instruction of Christ. Who is that demon in the area that can stop customers? Imagine that marriage is built on the instructions of God. Where from that altar in your family that create divorce in marriages? Imagine that pregnancy is by instruction of God. Who is that demon that can make you barren? No, no power can withstand a man who is in the practice of the sayings of Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Can I tell you the function of the word of God? Number three. The function of the word of God in our lives is to conform us to the image of Christ. So anytime we obey God's instruction, it is making us to be like Jesus. The function of the word of God in our lives is to conform us to the image of Christ. Tell someone, the function of the word of God in your life is to conform you to the image of Christ. So the more we practice the word, the more we obey the word, the more we do the word, the more we become like Jesus, the more we think like Jesus, the more we talk like Jesus, the more we live like Jesus, the more we have faith like Jesus, the more they see Jesus in every area of our life. May they see Jesus in our heart, receive the heart and the willingness to be a practitioner of the word, be a doer of the word. You will walk in the instructions of God. From today, may you be an obedient child of God that obey the instructions of God no matter how difficult the instructions are because God has said it he will obey that word may we be God's children that obey the word of God we will not break the word of God we will not turn our back to the word of God we will walk in the light of his word the Bible said if we walk in the light as he is in the light we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus his son he cleanses us from all our sins may we walk in the light of the word and as we walk in that light, may the image of Christ be seen in us. Clap your hands and shout amen, somebody. That is the function of the word of God. The function of the word of God in our lives. That to conform us to the image of Christ. To conform us. To the image of Christ. The more you obey the instructions of God, the more you practice the word of God, the more you do what Jesus is saying, the more you are being conformed into his image, into his personality. And that is the ultimate of Christianity. That at the end of the day, we are conformed to the Son of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Number four. So the more we hear the word, the more shall we be like him. The more we hear the word, the more shall we be like him. The more we hear the word, the more shall we be like him. In Proverbs chapter number 4, verse number 20 to 22. 
Hallelujah. Hey, the reason why many have attended church for many years and there is no change because we are not willing to obey the instructions, the word that we have heard. We want to do our own thing. So we go and we, we, we don't build on the rock. We build in the sand because you can only build on the rock when you hear the sayings of Christ and you do them. But when you don't do the sayings of Christ, you build on the sand. So next we are going to, whether you are a wise builder or you are a phrase builder, you will know that there are many things in your life you are actually a phrase builder. You will know it. Ah! No wonder it didn't work because I was a phrase builder. <laughs> there is nothing you want to build that you don't need instruction from God. Everything you want to build, ensure that there is an instruction from God. How did I get to this point? There was an instruction from God. It may make you abnormal. Imagine Abraham said, God has spoken to me that I should leave my father's house, I should leave my country, I should leave my kindred, I should go to a land he will show me. He started moving, not knowing a land God is showing him. It doesn't make sense. But that is how we take the work of faith. The light is not in where we are going. The light is in what God has said. Men may not understand us because we are obeying the instructions of God. Hallelujah. Prayer chapter 4, verse number 20 to 22. The Bible said, My son, attend to my words. Incline thy ears unto my saying. What is he said? My son, attend to my words. So when you, you, you begin to study the Bible, you are attending to God's written words. He said, as you are meditating and studying the word, bring down your spiritual ears because I will say something to you. I'm preaching from scriptures, but the Holy Spirit is speaking to us through, there is a sense of God through the word of God. Hello? Now those that have spiritual ears, there is something that the Spirit of God has placed on your heart. That if you do it from this moment, you will see the results. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He said, my son, attend to my words. Incline thy ears unto my saying. Verse 21. Let them not depart from thy eyes. In other words, see everything through the instructions of God. See everything through the eyes of God's word. See everything through the light of God's word. Your perception about life should be the perception from the light of God's word. Me, I see everything through the perception of God's word. How would have God seen the situation becomes my stand. Let them not depart from thy eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. He said, keep that instruction. Don't lose it. Keep it in your heart. Don't lose it. Don't lose it. Many will fight you to lose it. Don't lose it. Many challenges will come. Don't lose it. Many friends will leave you. Don't lose it. It will make you stand alone. Don't lose it. It will make men see you to be weird. To be uncomplying. Don't lose it. Why? Verse 22. For they are life to those that found them and are health to all their flesh. He said the instructions that has become your perception, the instructions that you must keep in your heart. He said it is life that you have kept. You have kept life. It shall be health to your body. He said they are life to those who find them and they are health, health, healing to their flesh, healing to their body. The word health from the word Hebrew word called mape. Mape means curative medicine. He said the instruction, the word of God you keep in your heart becomes a curative medicine to your body. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let them not depart from your eyes. See everything from the standpoint of the word. See everything from the sayings of Christ. See everything from the perception of the word. Keep them in the midst of your heart. For they are life. They are not deaf. If you disobey God's instruction, you will receive death. If you go by his instruction, you have a great life. May we have a great life from this day. For as we begin to keep his instruction, it is not difficult for God to change your life or to bless you. 
But we, we find it difficult to obey his instruction. We come to church and after message we throw it away. So we are always the same. Oh, come, we are praying. This is a month of growing in grace. Come and let's pray so that we can grow in grace. You don't attend. There's a pastor. It's no good growl. It's no good at all. It will not be good because it is your, your disobedient to the instruction. Hello. Hallelujah. Amen. The Lord is leading us to do this. Mm. Me. I don't have time. I don't have time. We are happy when we are struggling. We are happy when we labor like an elephant and we lick like we, we, we eat like an ant. We are happy. We are happy that we have to get everything through suffering. We are happy. But the easiest way to have a life full of joy and glory is our practice of God's instruction. Finally, number five. The word of Christ sanctifies the believer. The essence of God's instruction is to sanctify you. To always cleanse you. The word of God is a cleanser. It always cleans you. It sanctifies you. Because we are in the world of sin. But how do we constantly cleanse our spirit? It's through our obedience to the sayings of Christ. The word of Christ sanctifies the believer. In John chapter 17 verse 17. Jesus said. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Sanctify them. Cleanse them. Make them holy through thy truth. Then he said, thy word is truth. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. John chapter number 15 verse 3. He said, now ye are clean through the words I have spoken unto you. He said, the word, as I'm sharing God's word with you, you are cleaning. God is cleaning you spiritually. You are going through sanctification. Hello. There is sanctification in your spirit. That's why you don't need to fail to come to church. As we hear God's word, it sanctifies your mind. It cleanses you. 